Hello, this is Mingyang Lu. I just recently joined as a system professor in the Department of Engineering at Northeastern University. Before that, I had been a faculty member at the Jackson Laboratory for Mammalian Genetics in Bahab, Maine for four years. My life focuses on developing computational systems biology methods for modeling gene regulatory networks and applying them to understand how these networks drive cellular state transitions. When inspired by studies in synthetic biology, where gene regulatory circuits are designed and engineered into living cells to achieve certain functions, for example, toggle switch, oscillators, and a counter. Similarly, we believe that within complex gene regulatory networks, there exist biological circuits to drive cellular state transitions. There are indeed successful examples, such as the gene regulatory circuits driving circuiting rhythm, cell cycle, certain linear specification, and phenotypic switches. However, identifying gene circuits is still a challenging problem. We are encouraged by the new advances in genomics. Now we can not only measure multiple type of genomics data at the same time, but also at single cell resolution with the temporal and the spatial information. Moreover, these data are made publicly available almost immediately. Thus, we wonder whether we can model gene regulatory circuits by integrating this genomics data. Here shows the overall strategy for the approach that we are building. We first integrate both literature and genomics data to construct large gene regulatory networks with bioinformatics. Then, using mathematical modeling, we aim to identify the core gene regulatory circuit. Mathematical modeling can also simulate surface dynamics, from which we propose new predictions that can be tested experimentally. This is the iterated process to improve models. As an analog, bioinformatics is used to assemble genes into a network, just like we assemble parts into a car, but having a car doesn't mean we can drive it. What we need is a manual and the system's biology is exactly the manual for us to understand the functions of a circuit. As you can see, we're aiming to combine bottom-up and top-down approaches in systems biology. The key is a robust and powerful mathematical modeling method. A popular way to model a circuit is to use rate equations. However, most of the required kinetic parameters are not directly measurable, especially in vivo. Thus, one has to either make educated guess or fit the parameters against the data, such as gene expression. This becomes an issue for large circuits with large number of parameters, making the approach time-consuming and prone to overfitting. To address this parameter issue, we developed the new methods called random circuits perturbation or recipe. Unlike the traditional approach, where we focus on fixed parameter set, here in recipe, we generate and assemble a model with random kinetic parameters. We then use numerical methods to analyze the dynamics of each model in a high super way so that we can perform statistical analysis on the model to find the most robust behaviors. So far, we have applied the recipe to several literature-based circuits. In each case, we can generate an ensemble of 10,000 models from which we identified robust clusters that can be associated with biological relevant cellular states. Here, recipe just needs circuit topology as the only input and unbiasedly predicts the cellular states from an ensemble of random models. We continue on developing and generalizing recipe. Now we can model circuits with multiple type of regulations and perform stochastic analysis systematically. We have built a software in multiple languages. We also built an easy to use web server named Gene Network Explorer or GeneX. So far, we have shown recipe to be a powerful simulation method. Then how about network construction? Here, we developed an approach that integrates bioinformatics with mathematical modeling. We generated a series of gene networks using a popular tool Scenic and with different cutoffs or significance levels, and then use recipe to identify the optimal networks. We applied the methods to a recent collection of time series single sided sequencing data for studying epithelial mesenchymal transitions in four cancer cell lines with three different signaling treatments. For each, we can construct a content specific gene network. Interestingly, they're not very small or large networks, but of intermediate size. 
here shows the simulation results of one example, which we indeed identified two clusters of epithelial mesenchymal states. Interestingly, both simulation and experimental data suggest the distinct process of the forward and backward transitions consistent with the finding of another recent study. In the future, we will continue to develop recipes for network simulations. We will also develop new computational methods for integrate genomics data. Together with our experimental collaborators, we apply these methods to study the control mechanisms of cellular state transitions during tumor genesis and a normal developmental process such as stem cell differentiation. Here is our team back in Bar Harbor. We're excited that we will continue our journey here in Boston. We're looking for talented graduate and graduate students and postdocs to join our team. Please thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget to check our live websites below and feel free to contact me if you are interested in learning more about our research. Thank you.